Hey, thanks for checking out my channel. If this is your first time here, and if it's not, and you've come back, that means you're a subscriber. And you've chosen me again. I love I love you. I just I just wanted to say that. I hope that's not weird. <laughs> I'm just Dark American Movie Guy dot com and I'm in a goofy mood because I just saw DC League of Super Pets. It's one of those films that when you think about it and you're like, that'll never happen. But it's happened. And we have it. And it exists. And is that awesome? Uh, I'm a blind film critic, so I actually don't know how the animation looks in this film. I can't really comment on that. But what I can comment on is whether or not the film itself works. And uh, so far this year, I've been oddly impressed with the weirdest animation and, like, disappointed with the animation that I'm supposed to be impressed by. Um, so I don't know if it's a good thing that I like DC League of Super Pets, but I think it did pretty well at the box office. Um, and I liked it. I thought it was funnier than a few other films that have been released this year uh, that were supposed to be... Uh, you know, I put this above, like, The Bad Guys, Paws of Fury, um, Minions, The Rise of Gru. So, um, it just, it has its own style of humor. Um, I am tired of seeing, like, hamsters, uh, and guinea pigs and stuff like that used as villains in films. I, I don't know what we're doing with that. And uh, I feel like this is like the third film, even though I can't think of what the other films are, where one of those animals has been a villain uh, in a film. I remember one of them is the bad, uh, bad guys or whatever. But I can't think of, maybe it was chicken hair. I know there was the hamster of darkness was that. Maybe that's what I'm thinking about. The focus of the hamster of darkness. Anyway, I just, uh, yep. So the guinea pig's the villain in this. Uh, that was one of the things where I was like, oh, we're doing it again. Um, but sometimes these films, they don't know that other films are making the guinea pigs or the hamsters the villains and they just all get released and you're like, man, that's a lot of similarities. And he's, oh God. <laughs> um, this film worked really well. Uh, it's It's got Dwayne Johnson as Crypto, uh, and it has a backstory for him, and it's just a hilarious backstory, because we show all the way back to, uh, you know, on the planet Krypton, when they're putting the baby in the, in the shell, and this one rewrites the history of having Crypto jump in, and they're like, oh, it's okay, he'll need a puppy. Uh, he'll need a friend, you know. Um, I didn't know that they had dogs on Krypton. I watched that that TV show for two seasons. I don't remember there being any dogs on Krypton, but cool. I guess that's where crypto comes from. Makes sense. I'm not gonna. I, I don't. I don't know anything about crypto. I didn't read any of his comics. I don't know why he, how he came to be. So maybe this is his origin story, and it's just a a different version. So uh, he hops in and down to earth and we flash forward years later uh to crypto is is has now grown up and he has powers himself uh he's super strong and he fights crime uh as a dog and uh superman's his owner and he wants to go for a walk but superman's laid out in bed uh superman is voiced by john krasinski which i thought was an inspired choice that was somebody that i if we had a new Superman, I wouldn't be mad uh, at the casting. Um, I don't know that he's my first choice, but I also would not be mad at the casting. So um, he's in bed, passed out, and uh, Crypto's trying to wake him. And then that kind of gives you an idea of the tone of the film is from that point. <laughs> Um, and it kind of goes out from there. The other super pets are not actually super. They're all just in a shelter together. Uh, and that's the sort of the main pet is Ace, played by Kevin Hart. But you've got some other pets. You know, one of them is voiced by Natasha Leone, who curses and is bleeped out in the film, which is hilarious. Uh, I was like, why? <laughs> why? <laughs> Um, but, uh, 
yeah so um so that's where all the others there's like a turtle and and a pig and anyway it 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 all happens um but there's an evil guinea pig that used to be Lex Luthor's guinea pig and it's hairless and it uh wants to wants world domination and it has this plan and eventually it enacts its plan and uh it kidnaps the Justice League and it's up to Crypto, uh, but Crypto needs help because he can't do it on his own because she's, uh, I don't want to spoil it, but she's done something with Crypto so that Crypto, uh, Crypto needs help, which is how he gets the League of Super Pets. And because of the way that she's done everything, uh, the other animals in the shelter sort of they got powers from her escape they inherited these powers anyway so um in case you're wondering how this thing came to be you're like i didn't realize there was a league of super pets. yeah that's how there, there's a league of super pets now um so the things that really work for me in here uh actually you still have that uh, back and forth between dwayne johnson and kevin hart that works really well every time they are together um, I just, you know, uh, bashed me time over the head and thought that was terrible with Kevin Hart. This is far better. Uh, and he's, I know he's not physically in this, but his voiceover work in this is way better. <laughs> uh, he has a backstory to his character. Um, his character's funny. He doesn't have quite the screen time that Dwayne Johnson's crypto does. Um, they're not co-leads. Uh, he is definitely supporting uh, just by the virtue of how the film is structured. It's structured around crypto and then they pick up the other characters. So he does have a little bit less to do. But of the other super pets, he has the most dialogue. He has the most focus. He's like the leader of the other animals. So that's his story. Um, the big standout here though, uh, as is what everybody is saying, um, the big reason to watch this film is first of all, hats off to the writers on this because it had to be written well, the lines had to be written well, but Keanu Reeves as Batman is brilliant. Uh, it's, it's a performance, um... I kind of wish we had Oscars for voice talent <laughs> because I think he would win this. <laughs> I it's so first of all he sounds so much like every other Batman in a, in that Batman way that you can't like you're like is that Keanu like if there were so many people who didn't realize it was Keanu until the end credits that didn't know that he was going to be in this but I knew going in so as soon as I heard Batman's voice I was like oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> That's Keanu. <laughs> it's so good. Um, and his dialogue is so hilarious. So, uh, I thought I thought that was great, too. Um, big standout for me in this film. Uh, the rest of the superheroes are fine. I mean, they don't really do much with them. Uh, they're just kind of there. Lois Lane kind of shows up. Lex Luthor kind of shows up. So if you're showing up for the Justice League, don't show up for the super pets because I, I promise you like aside from making fun of occasionally like one of them they have very little to do or dialogue um they all kind of come in handy at the end when all of the pets need an owner but uh yeah so that way now all of the superheroes now have a super pet and a sequel has been set up um, but really like Wonder Woman, Cyborg, Green Lantern, The Flash, they all really just don't do a whole lot. Aquaman has some lines because we all love to make fun of Aquaman. So he's always sort of <laughs> the, uh, <sighs> the one that they just put over in the corner and laugh at. But, um, yeah, so that's the film, uh, without spoiling anything else. Anyway, that's, that's enough of it. Uh, it's fun, it's funny, it's lighthearted, it's something, if I had kids, I'd love to watch it with them. Uh, it's great for adults and kids. It has everything it needs to do as an animated film. 
uh, I honestly don't really have much negative stuff to say about that. Um, there's even a scene where Kevin Hart is uh, talking about his past and it's this like heartfelt like story that he's telling and you can hear a song and it kind of feels like that they're doing like a when she loved me type uh inspiration and I, it's this like serious sort of song that plays underneath it that sounds vaguely like a Randy Newman-esque type singer doing a song that's kind of like when she loved me <laughs> and I was like is this a joke is this a gag um, so I think there's a lot of jokes and gags here to, to uncover and, and figure out. Um, but, uh, it does, it, it, there's even a joke, uh, there's a Marvel joke thrown in there. Um, it's a little quick one that just is an offhand reference to some Marvel characters. It's, I, I really like this film. I, I, I don't really have that much, I don't really have anything negative to say about it except for, um, I perhaps would not have treated the Justice League as so disposable, um, just because it, it, it's kind of weird how they focus on some people, but then on others, they just kind of are there. Uh, if you don't need them, then don't put them in the film. <laughs> like, why? Why did we need them? Um, so that would be my thought. But, uh, that, and I'm just... I'm done with guinea pigs and hamsters as villains. I just I need I don't need that in my life anymore. I'm done, gone, move on. Um but uh there will be a sequel. There are end end credit scenes in this to, to uh solidify that. So make sure you stay through the credits. Audio description on this is fine. It didn't uh there's nothing in this that made me think uh there was anything negative it, it described everything well. Um, the only thing would be that you don't necessarily know the style of animation, but, uh, I don't think that matters. Uh, it, it's got all the jokes and who moves where and who has what power, what the destruction looks like. All of the good stuff that you would need from this film is all in the audio description. So, uh, please check this out. It's one of the better films this year. So I'm going to give DC League of Super Pets an A-. minus. Pretty big fan of this. Uh, I'm surprised. I did not think I would be. I assumed this would be a little bit more like Teen Titans Go, where it would leave me kind of feeling a little divisive on it. Um, but uh, this is not that. Uh, it's a breath of fresh air in many ways. So good job to the team behind this film. Uh, thanks for watching. You can drop a comment. Uh, I'm trying to get to 100 by the end of the year, so if you could subscribe, that'd be great. Uh, you can go to my website, macmovieguide.com, for more reviews. You can go to the audio description project, adp.acb.org. It'll let you know what has audio description, where you can watch it. And the adna.org, the adna.org, will let you know who's narrating what. Uh, and that's, that's it. I gotta go review something else, but I'll see you on the other side.